Welcome to the Dubai Navigator, my name is Lucas Vincent. In this video we are going to cover and explain the history and highlights of every major neighborhood in Dubai. We could have made this video many hours long, but for your sake we summarized it as much as possible. For your convenience we segmented this video into chapters by neighborhood. So if you are interested in a particular part of Dubai, feel free to skip ahead. We will cover all areas in the order shown here on the map. This custom map was created by us to highlight all freehold areas in Dubai. Foreigners from non-Gulf countries are only allowed to own real estate in the highlighted areas. The different colors are there to show the borders between neighboring freehold neighborhoods and otherwise serve no purpose. Without further ado, let's start in the very north. Here we have the neighborhoods of Dera and Bur Dubai. They form the historic core of the city. Here you find Dubai's gold souk, as well as the spice and textile souks. You can cross the Dubai Creek for just one dirham or 27 US cent by traditional Abra boat. Recent developments to elevate the historic core include Al Zif a 1.5 km long shopping and dining district by Miwas properties that is split into a modern section with a marina and a much larger recreation of a traditional Arabic town. There's also Shindaka, another newly built cultural district. Here you find a variety of museums including Al Shindaka Museum which covers the entire history of Dubai's development. It's always worth a visit. And lastly, the Dera Enrichment Project, which includes dozens of new buildings including hotels, residential spaces and an expansion to Dubai's Gold Souk. Dera and Bur Dubai do not allow foreign real estate investments and the area is primarily home to South Asian and Southeast Asian traders and their families. Right across Dera we have Dubai Islands. Dubai Islands are the remnants of Palm Dera which started construction in the mid 2000s and was planned to be the third and largest Palm Island, developed by Nakheel Properties. Palm Dera was supposed to feature 8000 luxurious oceanfront villas, as well as residential towers and buildings for 300,000 people. The 2008 financial crisis hit Dubai hard and as a result land reclamation was never completed. A few years later, in the mid-2010s, Nikhil rebranded the already reclaimed land as Dera Islands. A large connector bridge to the mainland was built, along with a souk wholesale market and two hotels. The wholesale market partially opened under the name Souk Al Marfa, however, to this day, only a fraction of the 5,000 built retail spaces have been occupied. Construction also started on the vast Dera Mall, but has been put on hold for a number of years now. More recently, the islands were again rebranded and are now known as Dubai Islands. There's also a new master plan that envisions the construction of more hotels, residential buildings, a golf course and the completion of the shopping mall. Announced just a few weeks ago, an additional connector bridge will link Dubai Islands to Mina Rashid and Dubai Maritime City. Mina Rashid, also known as Rashid Yachts and Marina, is a master development by Ima Properties that will include a number of mid-rise residential buildings around the already operating marina and cruise ship terminal, both of which will be upgraded as part of the development. Here you also find the Queen Elizabeth II cruise ship that has been converted into a four-star hotel and surprisingly contains one of Dubai's many economic free zones where you can set up your company. Adjacent to Mina Rashid we have Dubai Maritime City, which is controlled and developed by DP World, Dubai's main port operator that controls Port Jebel Ali and dozens of other ports around the world. Once completed, Dubai Maritime City will consist of end-to-end -end oceanfront residential towers. Let's move further down along the coast. Next we have Pearl Jumeirah, a reclaimed island by Miras, where foreigners are allowed to buy individual land plots to develop their own villa. 
Here you will also find the well-known Nikki Beach Resort 5-star hotel. Right next door we have La Mer, also developed by Mira's properties. La Mer consists of three main parts. Port de la Mer is a man-made marina with apartment buildings and villas built in the style of the French Riviera. La Mer Beach is a public beachfront shopping and dining destination, the southern part of which is currently being redeveloped. Here you also find the recently closed down Laguna Water Park. And lastly, we have La Mer South, where similarly to Pearl Jumeirah, foreigners can buy individual plots to develop their own property. Further down the coast we have Jumeirah Bay, another reclaimed island by Miwas. Jumeirah Bay again offers individual land plots for self-development, as well as the Bulgari 5-star hotel and residences and a marina. Cristiano Ronaldo is known to regularly vacation at the Bulgari hotel, where he has met up repeatedly with Sheikh Hamdan, the son of Dubai's current ruler Sheikh Mohammed and likely future ruler of Dubai. A recently launched extension to Jumeirah Bay is the Bulgari Lighthouse Tower, which features the most expensive apartment ever sold in Dubai at 112 million US dollar or 410 million dirhams. And here we are, already at the entrance of the Dubai Canal. Dubai Creek is a natural seawater inlet of the Arabian Gulf. It was extended in two phases. The first phase saw the extension up to Sheikh Zayed Road as part of the development of Business Bay. This was done in the mid 2000s. Ten years later the second phase connected the creek back to the ocean in 2016. This second phase is known as the Dubai Water Canal. 3.2 kilometers long the area is known for Al Safa Park which was partially deconstructed to make room for the waterway, three stunning pedestrian bridges and a waterfall tourist attraction. A number of super high-end property developments along the canal announced over the past two years led the area to become known as Dubai's second billionaire's row, the first billionaire's row being Front G on Palm Jumeirah, more on that later in this video. One apartment in the Mr. C residences along the canal sold for more than 32 million US dollar. One of the most architecturally stunning proposals for the area is the Gate Tower. Currently being more of a vision than an actual proposal, the tower would bridge the canal and frame the Dubai skyline behind it. Maidan is the company that originally built Dubai Canal and also had plans to further extend the waterway into District 1 and Sopa Heartland further inland. More on that later. The entire area between Sheikh Zayed Road and the Arabian Sea is known as Jumewa. Jumewa has historically been restricted to Emirati real estate buyers. Only a small number of pockets allow for foreign property ownership. Miras originally envisioned the development of Jumeirah Gardens right along Sheikh Zayed Road. The development would have included more canals, spectacular high rises and more reclaimed islands. A victim of the 2008 financial crisis, Miras built the neighborhood of City Walk in the place of Jumeirah Gardens. City Walk is a walkable upmarket neighborhood featuring a pedestrian mall the Canadian University Dubai and the Coca-Cola Arena which is Dubai's largest fully enclosed event space. City Walk is currently undergoing an expansion which includes the Central Park development with new residential buildings. Right behind the skyscrapers of Sheikh Zayed Road we have Satwa, also known as Mini Manila due to its high population of Filipinos. There's also a lot of construction activity going on here, but none of the projects are available for foreign freehold ownership at the time this video was made. Sheikh Zayed Road is home to many of Dubai's tallest skyscrapers, including the currently tallest hotel in the world, the Gebora Hotel. One of Dubai's tallest towers under construction is located here, City Tower at more than 400 meters. 
Other notable projects include the still under construction Mandarin Oriental Hotel or Vassal Tower at 302 meters and Air Dubai, a 320 meter tall luxury residential tower. Unfortunately for foreign investors, very few buildings on Shayside Road allow freehold ownership, Air Dubai being one of them. On the other side of Shayside Road, we have DIFC, short for Dubai International Financial Center. DIFC is a free zone and home to many of the world's most prominent finance, law and consulting firms. Here you also find the Dubai Stock Exchange, the Dubai World Trade Center, the Museum of the Future and Emirates Towers. Emirates Towers are owned directly by Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, the ruler of Dubai, who maintains his private office here. Large parts of DIFC are connected by the Gate Avenue Mall. This connectivity allows residents and workers of adjacent buildings to seamlessly travel through the district without having to venture outside. Long-term plans envision the expansion of DAFC further inland into an area known as Sabil. It's finally time to talk about Downtown and Business Bay. While they have grown together, both Downtown and Business Bay are technically speaking separate neighborhoods. Downtown Dubai is a master development by EMA Properties, a publicly traded company in which Dubai's government only owns a minority stake. Business Bay is under the jurisdiction of Dubai Properties, which is part of the fully government-owned Dubai Holding. Dubai Holding also controls the previously mentioned Maidan and Mewas real estate companies. We will cover the intricacies of Dubai's many property developers in depth in a future video. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss it. Downtown Dubai is highly master planned, meaning that every single building within Mohammed bin Rashid Boulevard is developed by EMA Properties. The result is a harmonious fit of architectural styles. I don't need to mention that downtown Dubai is home to the world's tallest building, Burj Khalifa at 828 meters, the tallest light show in the world, Dubai Opera, the Dubai Fountain, the tallest synchronized musical fountain in the world, Burj Park and Dubai Mall. Dubai Mall, despite many claims to the contrary, is not the largest shopping mall in the world anymore. That title goes to the Iran Mall in Tehran. However, Dubai Mall is still the most visited shopping mall in the world, with around 100 million visitors annually. Imagine that. More people visit Dubai Mall every year than the population of Germany, and approximately the same number as the populations of Egypt and the Philippines. Multiple mall extensions including Fashion Avenue, with the largest Rolex, Gucci and Prada stores in the world, Chinatown and Dubai Mall Zabil mean that there's always something new to see. Dubai Mall is also home to Dubai Aquarium, the largest HD screen in the world, an ice rink and two department anchor stores, Galeries Lafayette from France and Bloomingdale's from the US. Business Bay differentiates itself from downtown Dubai in a number of ways. It has direct access to the ocean through its canal, features a large number of offices in close proximity to Business Bay Metro Station and features a wide range of architectural styles and price points for apartments. Business Bay's master developer Dubai Properties and Dubai Holding sold off the majority of plots to smaller developers. That's why there's such a large range of property styles and prices. At the very top end, we have the recently launched Bugatti Residences by Bingatti Properties. The development's penthouse has the highest asking price of any apartment ever in Dubai's history, at 204 million US dollar or 750 million dirhams sized at 44,000 square feet or almost 4,100 square meters, the apartment still remains to be sold at the time this video was published. 
Other super luxurious projects include Omnia Zwela and Lana Towers, as well as the world's future tallest residential tower, also by Bengati. Nonetheless, these properties are more the exception than the rule. Property prices in Business Bay are on average lower than in downtown, and there are plenty of affordable units available. Other notable developments in the area include the JW Marriott, the currently tallest 5-star hotel in the world. Housing more than 1,600 rooms, it is also one of Dubai's largest hotels by total number of hotel rooms. We already covered other local projects including the Peninsula and Al Habtur Tower with 1,600 apartments in another video here on our YouTube channel. Adjacent to Business Bay is the Dubai Design District, a free zone for companies operating in the design industry. If you remember, early in this video we covered preliminary plans by the company Maidan to further extend the canal network all the way from Business Bay through Mohammed bin Rashid City back to Dubai Creek. Stay with me, because here it gets complicated. Mohammed bin Rashid City, also known by its initials MBR City, is a vast geographical area further inland. Before the financial crisis, the area was supposed to be developed into Mohammed bin Rashid Gardens, named after Dubai's ruler. These plans never materialized. Instead, the area is being subdivided into sub-clusters that are more manageable one at a time. So far, these sub-clusters include Dubai Hills Estate, District 1, Sopa Heartland, Azizi Riviera, as well as Nad al Sheba. Nad al Sheba and District 1 were the first clusters to be developed, under the supervision of Maidan. In Nad al Sheba, you find the Maidan Hotel and Racetrack which are home to the Maidan Free Zone as well as the Dubai World Cup, one of the world's most prestigious horse racing competitions. District 1 includes the so-called Crystal Lagoon alongside villas and apartment buildings. Original plans also envisioned the construction of Maidan One Mall, the largest artificial ski slope in the world, and Dubai One Tower the tallest residential tower and second tallest tower in the world at 711 meters, all located alongside the extension of the Dubai Canal. While construction of Maidan Run Mall started in 2014, financial difficulties of the master developer Maidan led to the indefinite suspension of construction works. As a result of these issues, the completion of the mall, the tower and the canal extension are highly uncertain. Right next door we have Sopa Heartland. Most of the projects here are developed by Sopa Properties, as well as a few smaller developers such as Ellington Properties. Sopa Heartland is home to Dubai's most expensive private school, North London Collegiate School Dubai. On the other side of the promised canal is Azizi Riviera by Azizi Properties. Azizi Riviera primarily consists of smaller studio and one-bedroom apartments, while Sopa Heartland is home to larger one-, two- and three-bedroom apartments. Across the highway, we find two more projects by Sopa. Sopa One, the largest residential building in Dubai once completed, with 2,700 apartments. And Sopa Heartland Two. Right nearby is the Ras Al Khor Wildlife Sanctuary. This is where you find Dubai's famous pink flamingos, but only during winter season as flamingos are migratory birds. Next door, Dubai Creek Harbour is one of the city's largest master plan communities. The district has been through many redesigns over the years. Before the 2008 financial crisis, the area was known as the Lagoons and under the control of Dubai Properties and Dubai Holding, just like Business Bay. The area was modeled around numerous canals and four iconic dancing towers. Plans also included the development of a Zaha Hadid opera on an island in Dubai Creek and the construction of the largest arc bridge in the world crossing the creek leaving from Al Jadaf. 
the arc bridge would have surpassed the current largest and tallest arc bridge in the world in China. Excavation works for the various canals started but were put on hold due to the effect of the 2008 financial crisis. Dubai Holding never resumed works and instead sold the land to EMA properties in return for cash and a minority equity stake in EMA. Plans for the bridge have been downgraded but still include the extension of Dubai's green metro line. Final designs are yet to be released. The island has been repurposed for residential space rather than an opera and the mainland has seen limited construction so far. Original plans envisioned the construction of Dubai Creek Tower to retake the title of the world's tallest building from Saudi Arabia after the completion of the planned Kingdom Tower in Jeddah. Plans were also well advanced for the first residential buildings around the perimeter of Dubai Creek Tower, such as this twin tower complex called the Sentinels, but which has currently been put on hold. The same is the case for the adjacent shopping mall, Dubai Square, planned to be the new largest mall in the world. Original proposals for Dubai Square envisioned the recreation of famous shopping destinations around the world, including London, New York, Los Angeles, Paris and Milan. The mall is broadly inspired by two other malls. The first inspiration is the Avenues Mall in Kuwait. Opened in 2007, the Kuwaiti Mall similarly replicates a variety of global shopping destinations with the feel of an outdoor space. The second inspiration is a now scrapped proposal for another Dubai shopping mall called the Mall of the World, which was envisioned by Dubai Holding to be built across Mall of the Emirates. Let's move on to the next neighborhood. Dubai Festival City is controlled by the Al Futaim family, which also owns the local Kafur, IKEA and Toyota franchises and contains Festival City Mall with its daily evening light and water shows. A golf course in the area is currently non-operating, but future development is likely. Across the creek we have Al Jadaf, which features numerous mid-rise residential buildings, and Dubai Wharf a waterfront residential district with the famous Versace Hotel and a modern art museum. Dubai's largest library, Mohammed bin Rashid Library, is also located here. Right next door is Dubai Healthcare City, which houses the largest concentration of hospitals and medical facilities in Dubai. Dubai International Airport continues to be the largest airport in the world by international passenger numbers. In terms of total passenger numbers, it ranks among the top 5. Mirdev is a fairly established low-density residential neighborhood nearby and primarily known for its affordable price point and Dubai's largest public park, Al Mushrif Park. The Dubai Navigator is the only 100% independent real estate and relocation consultancy in Dubai. We do not sell real estate and have never earned any commissions. Instead, we help clients like you fully understand the market and make investment decisions solely based on market data. We calculate and project rental returns for every building and neighborhood in Dubai, based on local vacancy rates, service charges and the number of new handovers. We also specialize in complex tax-optimized business and residence relocation to Dubai taking into account transfer pricing and exit tax regulations of your home country. If you already live in the UAE, we can assist you with international investment strategies that allow you to avoid taxes on capital gains, inheritances and dividends on investments in the US, UK and Europe. We also offer tax-optimized estate planning strategies for your global assets. Visit us at thedubainavigator.com for a full overview of our services. Further inland we have International City. International City is, alongside Discovery Gardens, which we will cover later in this video, one of Dubai's two largest affordable housing communities. 
Built by Nikhil in the mid-2000s, the area consists of multiple subclusters modeled after various countries including Italy, Spain, Greece, England, China and Morocco. International City is home to the UAE's largest Chinese population, as well as Dragon Mart, a huge wholesale market for Chinese imports. Located in the vicinity are also a number of other wholesale markets, including Dubai's largest textile market, furniture market, Dubai's largest center for new and used cars, as well as a fresh produce market. Phase 2 of International City is currently under development next door, but does not follow the same country theming and buildings are now developed by smaller private developers, not by Nakiel. Next we have Silicon Oasis, which is home to Ishta Free Zone. The community has single family houses and a free zone office park at its core and multifamily residential buildings around it. Silicon Central Mall is the main highlight of the area. Directly south is Dubai Academic City, Dubai's largest cluster of educational institutions, including Zayed University, the University of Dubai, the University of Birmingham, a French and German private school and an Emirates flight school. Coming up is Dubai Land, a vast inland area consisting of countless suburban villa communities. These include Arabian Ranches 1, 2 and 3, all developed by IMA properties, Reem and the Valley, also by IMA, the Mark Hills 1 and 2 and the Mark Lagoons, developed all by the Mark properties, Mudon and Villanova, developed by Dubai properties, as well as another dozen or so smaller communities such as Cherry Woods by Miraz, Town Square by Anshama, Al Barari and Sustainable City. There are also the upscale communities of Tilal Al Gaf, the Oasis and Jumeirah Golf Estates. Let us know in the comments below if you would like us to make a detailed video on Dubai's many suburban communities. All of these suburban clusters have unique price points, architectural styles and amenities. Al Barari, for example, is one of Dubai's greenest neighborhoods. Original plans from before the Great Financial Crisis in 2008 envisioned the construction of a large number of amusement parks in the area. One park that was realized is IMG Worlds of Adventure, formerly the world's largest fully enclosed amusement park before the opening of Warner Brothers World in nearby Abu Dhabi. Another park is Global Village, an open-air park themed after various countries and known for its regular fireworks shows and relatively low entrance fees. And of course, we shouldn't forget Dubai Miracle Garden, the largest flower garden in the world with more than 150 million flowers. Also located in Dubai land is Falcon City of Wonders, a suburb built in the shape of a falcon. Original plans envisioned the construction of major world sites here, including an Eiffel Tower replica taller than the original in Paris, the largest pyramid in the world, and a Taj Mahal replica again larger than the original. And all of these structures would contain usable space inside. The pyramid would contain residences, while the Taj Mahal would house a 5 star hotel and wedding venue. Except for a number of villas, none of these structures were built. Even further inland we have Dubai's wilderness, endless sand deserts. And even here we find numerous attractions. These include Love Lake, which you may have seen on social media. And more importantly, the Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum Solar Park. At a size of 77 square kilometers or 16 kilometers in length, times 8 kilometers in width, once fully operational it will be the largest solar park anywhere in the world. And there's more. MBR Solar Park is already on record for the lowest electricity production cost of any power plant in the world. Electricity is produced here for as little as 1.6 US cents per kilowatt hour, thanks to Dubai's all-year-round sunny climate 
and huge economies of scale. The largest part of the park consists of photovoltaic solar panels, with a smaller section dedicated to the world's tallest solar power tower. The tower heats up molten salt solutions which can be stored overnight to generate electrical power when it is most needed. Let's return to Dubai's many residential neighborhoods. Next we have Motor City and Sport City. As the name suggests, these subclusters are themed around cars and sports respectively. Motor City is home to Dubai Autodrome, the city's largest racing track, and the only one having a FIA Grade 1 license, which means that the track is technically licensed to hold Formula 1 races. In the early 2000s, a number of minor championships were held here, but not the Formula 1. Similarly, Dubai Sports City features a golf course and a large number of stadiums and sports facilities, not all of which have been completed. Right next door we have one of Dubai's largest residential communities, Jumeirah Village Circle and Jumeirah Village Triangle. Both neighborhoods are developed by Nakheel Properties, which subdivided the land and sold off individual plots to smaller developers, including Ellington Properties, The Mark, Bloom Properties and Tiger Properties among others. As a result you find a large variety of architectural styles, unit sizes and building types from townhouses to high rises in the districts. Both neighborhoods are usually referred to by their initials JVC and JVT and most development here is still ongoing as can be seen in these satellite images. The area is home to Circle Mall in JVC and the much larger Al Khail Avenue Mall in JVT. Al Khail Avenue Mall is only partially complete and is currently on hold. Let's complete the inland circle with Dubai Hills Estate. Developed in a 50-50 joint venture between Ima Properties and Miras, the neighborhood includes the recently opened Dubai Hills Mall with around 650 stores. Dubai Hills Park, numerous apartment buildings, an office park and multiple villa clusters. Here you also find Dubai Hills Golf Club, nestled between some of Dubai's most expensive villas, which are comparable in scale and price only to those found in Emirates Hills and on Palm Jumeirah. There are plans to extend Dubai's metro network. While often advertised by developers, there are currently only draft proposals to build a new metro extension all the way from Dubai International Airport to Jumeirah Village Circle. However, the RTA, Dubai's Road and Transport Authority, is reportedly working on two other extensions, namely the Red Lines extension into Mirdiv and the Green Lines extension over Dubai Creek into Creek Harbor, International City and Dubai Academic City. There are also plans to connect Dubai with Abu Dhabi via passenger rail. However, construction is only underway for the freight route, not the passenger route. One proposal envisions the construction of the Dubai passenger rail terminus in between Dubai Hills Estate and Maidan's District 1. Only time will tell whether these plans will materialize. The area located in between Dubai Hills Estate and Jumeirah is Al Khors, an industrial neighborhood which also houses Al Sekal Avenue, Dubai's premier arts district. The coast side Jumeirah community is primarily inhabited by Arabs, and not a freehold area, one exception being Madina Jumeirah. Madina Jumeirah is an upscale tourist resort built in the traditional Arabic style and includes a souk and kennel front restaurants and cafes. Here you also find the Madina Jumeirah Conference Center, which hosts the annual Art Dubai Show, Dubai's most prestigious arts exhibition. Another annual event taking place here is the World Government Summit, Dubai's answer to the World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland. Dubai's World Government Summit has welcomed speakers such as Barack Obama, Narendra Modi, Richard Branson and Elon Musk. Even Klaus Schwab, 
chairman of the World Economic Forum, has been a speaker at the event. Fittingly, right next door we have Burj Al Arab, proclaimed as the world's most luxurious hotel, the White Wadi Water Park, and the original Jumeirah Beach Hotel. Under construction is the Jumeirah Masa Al Arab Five Star Hotel and Residences, and the Marina Jumeirah Residential District, with upscale apartments, some of which feature front row views of Burj Al Arab. Also located in the area are Jumeirah Beach and Kite Beach, two vast public beaches accessible to anyone. Along the coast you also find a many kilometers long bike and running track for those who like to stay in shape. Further down south we find Basha with the Mall of the Emirates, Dubai's second most popular shopping mall with a similarly large number of luxury stores from Apple to Louis Vuitton, just like in Dubai Mall. Mall of the Emirates is of course also home to one of the world's largest indoor ski slopes. The Kempinski Hotel with direct views of the slopes and Dubai's largest supermarket by floor area, a Kafur hypermarket. Just like Basha, adjacent Basha Heights, also known as TCOM, features numerous relatively affordable residential buildings and hotels for those looking for affordable accommodation in a great location. Al Sufu is the neighborhood directly in front of Palm Jumeirah and includes Dubai's Internet City, Dubai Media City and Dubai Knowledge Park, all three of which are their own respective free zones where you can set up a business. Many multinationals from Google to Microsoft and CNN to the BBC have set up their UAE and Middle Eastern headquarters here. That brings us to Palm Jumeirah, the original Palm Island. Fun fact, Nakheel, the company behind Dubai's Palm Islands is the Arabic term for palm tree. Nakheel is a government owned company founded in the early 2000s with the primary objective of constructing the palm developments. The early success of Palm Jumeirah allowed the company to quickly expand into developing land areas further inland, such as the aforementioned international city and JVC. Palm Jumeirah's first off-plan launches were the shoreline apartments, which were first offered from as little as $120,000 US dollar when Dubai first opened up to foreign investors back in 2002. As we cover in another video here on our YouTube channel on the best performing Dubai property investments, the shoreline apartments have earned their original investors a fortune. The Palm features a monorail which links the mainland all the way to the Atlantis resort. The monorail unfortunately does not yet connect to Dubai's metro. On the monorail route are Al Itihad Park, Nakheel Mall and West Palm Beach with the famous party hotel Five Palm Jumeirah and the club at West Palm Beach, a collection of upscale beachfront restaurants and cafes. On the outer crescent we have many of Dubai's most luxurious oceanfront five-star hotels including the Kempinski Hotel The Palm, the one and only The Palm and of course the Atlantis Resort with its underwater suites. Right next door is the newly opened Royal Atlantis which we featured in another video here on our YouTube channel on Dubai's rising luxury home market. Located in between both Atlantis resorts is the Aqua Venture Water Park, the largest water park in the world. From an investment viewpoint, the Palm has been a roaring success, with property values having risen here by up to 80% since 2020 alone, and this new construction of some of Dubai's most expensive new apartments including the spectacular Como Residences, at a height of more than 300 meters, and the Ava Tower by Omniad. There's currently just one road access point to Palm Jumeirah, and the Palm Fountain, located at the food and beverage mall The Point, was recently closed down for redevelopment. Overwhelmed by the large number of neighborhoods in Dubai? If you're unsure whether and where to invest in Dubai real estate, we have the right service for you. We analyze the entire Dubai real estate market to find properties with the highest net rental yields 
and highest appreciation potential. We do so using data on upcoming construction, vacancy rates, service charges and rental demand. Using all this information, we are able to reliably predict which investments are likely to outperform the market. And the best part is that we do not sell real estate, do not work with any real estate agents and have never earned commissions. We just collect and analyze market data to provide our clients with the only 100% unbiased real estate advice you can find in Dubai. Check out our real estate advisory services on our website thedubainavigator.com. The next neighborhood on our agenda is Dubai Marina. A master development by EMA Properties, the area now consists of the Canal District with Dubai Marina Mall and the tallest block with the world's highest concentration of super tall skyscrapers with a minimum height of 300 meters. Currently under construction here is Dubai's newest, tallest hotel in the world, CL Tower. And of course we have JBR, short for Jumeirah Beach Residence, with more than 6,900 apartments. Despite EMA developing most of the infrastructure and some of the residential towers in the area, the majority of buildings here were developed by other developers, including Select Group, Dubai Properties, and the Mark properties. A recent extension to the neighborhood includes Blue Waters Island, a development by Dubai Holding and Miras. The island or better peninsula features some of Dubai's priciest apartments, a pedestrian mall and the world's tallest ferris wheel, Ein Dubai. After a short run for the 2021-2022 winter season, Ayn Dubai has been closed due to unknown maintenance issues. That being said, the Wheels Light Show continues to entertain visitors every night. Another extension is Dubai Harbour, also developed by Dubai Holding. Dubai Harbour features a cruise ship terminal, the residential neighborhood Ima Beachfront and a variety of smaller developments by Sopa and Demarque. Dubai Harbour is home to the largest marina in the Middle East, as well as the Middle East's largest boat and yachting show. The views of Dubai Marina from here are stunning. Located nearby is the airstrip for Skydive Dubai, allowing you to skydive over Palm Jumeirah and the marina. Dubai Marina is notorious for traffic, particularly during rush hours and on weekends. To beat the traffic, you can always hop on the Dubai Tram, which uses Alstom's cable-free APS technology. In fact, the Dubai Tram was the first such system installed outside France. The Tram connects Dubai Marina to the Palm via the monorail connector and links to Dubai's metro. On the other side of Dubai Marina is Jumeirah Lakes Towers or JLT named after the lakes in the center of the community. JLT is home to DMCC, the UE's largest free zone by number of companies registered, as we explain in detail in our video on the 5 best free zones in the UE here on our YouTube channel. In the center of the community is the 360 meter tall Almas Tower, the headquarters of the free zone. Residential space in JLT is considerably more affordable than in Dubai Marina, entirely convenient due to the nearby location of many offices. Uptown Dubai, formerly known as District 2020, is the most recent expansion of the DMCC Free Zone. Already complete is the first of multiple towers, with the tallest 711 meter tall structure still being in the planning stage. Located right behind JLT are the villa communities of Jumeirah Park, Jumeirah Islands, the Springs, the Meadows, Emirates Hills and the Lakes. Jumeirah Islands and Emirates Hills are the most pricey and developed by Nakheel and Ima respectively. Close nearby is Emirates Golf Club, the Middle East's first real grass golf course. Opened in 1988, it hosts the PGA European Tour. And famous golfers from Rory McElroy to Tiger Woods have played here over the years. 
Let's head over to Al Fujan. Here we find Ibn Battuta Mall, the world's largest themed mall modeled after the countries visited by the world explorer Ibn Battuta, the Arab Marco Polo of sorts. Discovery Gardens is Dubai's second large affordable housing community besides the aforementioned international city and consists of 26,000 apartments spread out over more than 300 buildings designed in a Mediterranean style. The core of Al Fujan consists of various villa and townhouse subclusters, as well as more apartment buildings developed by a range of developers, the largest of which being Daniel Benazizi. Al Fujan is connected by Metro to Dubai Marina, as well as Dubai Investments Park, a large industrial neighborhood with villas at its core. And Expo City. Expo City was the site of the World Fair Expo 2020 and features the Dubai Exhibition Center, which will host the COP28 United Nations Climate Change Conference in 2023. A large number of the World Fair's country pavilions, including those of India, Luxembourg and Saudi Arabia, will remain in place permanently and the entire area is being redeveloped into a walkable residential neighborhood with office spaces located in the core. Expo City is also home to a number of tourist attractions, including the Al Wasel Projection Dome, the Surreal Water Fountain and the Garden in the Sky Observation Tower. A new Expo Mall has been completed but remains to be opened. And the metro station at Expo City may very well be considered the most futuristic metro station in the world. Just have a look. Expo City is the northern tip of the Dubai South master plan. Dubai South is the largest urban master plan anywhere in the UAE and one of the largest in the world. At its core is Al Maktoum Airport, also known as Dubai World Central. So far, only a budget passenger and cargo terminal have been built, and passenger services to the airport remain sporadic. As of 2023, only cargo airlines and charter flights are flying here. The main terminal remains in the planning stage, and the start of construction remains uncertain. If ever completed, the airport will have a handling capacity of 200 million passengers, That's twice the size of the world's current largest airport in Atlanta in the US. A number of residential neighborhoods have already popped up around the site of the airport, including Dubai South City, Ema South and the recently announced Azizi Venice project. To the west of Dubai South is the Jebel Ali Free Zone, the largest free zone in the world by land area as we cover in our video on the UE's best 5 free zones. Jebel Ali is also the world's largest integrated customs zone that allows customs free transportation between Jebel Ali port, local warehouses and manufacturing facilities and the cargo airport facilities at Al Maktoum airport. There's no place like it anywhere in the world. Named after Jebel Ali is Palm Jebel Ali. Put on hold after the 2008 financial crisis, Palm Jebel Ali was recently relaunched by developer Nikhil and will feature 110 kilometers of oceanfront luxury properties and 80 luxury hotels. Talking about offshore developments, we should not forget about the world, the island archipelago in the shape of the world map. The largest development here is the heart of Europe which features a number of 5-star hotels, themed after European destinations such as Marbella and Portofino, as well as numerous floating boathouses called seahorses. Progress on the world islands has been slow, and even the heart of Europe by Kleindienst properties has seen significant delays over the years due to the lack of overland transportation infrastructure. Other minor projects in the world include the resort island Lebanon and the Anantara World Islands Resort. West of Palm Jebel Ali is the never completed Dubai waterfront development, which serves as a daily reminder that all Dubai wants is to expand, grow and become the best city in the world to live in. 
Finally, we have reached the frontier region with Abu Dhabi. Located here is Dubai Parks and Resorts. The district opened with a Legoland Park, the Motion Gate Theme Park and a Bollywood Theme Park. The Bollywood Theme Park was recently closed and will reportedly be converted into a Real Madrid Theme Park. Construction also started on the Middle East's first Six Flags Park. However, development was abandoned and the already ordered rides for the Six Flags Park were reallocated to the other parks. Dubai Parks and Resorts also features the free-to-access Riverland Shopping and Dining Destination, as well as an outlet mall. That's it, a complete guide to all major neighborhoods in Dubai. There's so much more information we could have put into this video. So if you think we should make more detailed guides for individual neighborhoods, leave us a comment below. Thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.